Oh, that's new. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> Welcome to Coffee with Karma. I have no idea what causes Ristrimayo to suddenly do weird things like that. That was that was very, very strange. Um, anyway, good morning. It's it's Monday, and today I'm going to talk about the customer transformation map. What is it, and what do you need to include in it? Because it is a key piece of information if you intend to write business to write books that will grow your business. Good morning. My name is Karma Spence, and I help entrepreneurs write lead attracting books in 90 days or less. And one of the key pieces of information that one needs before they can even come up with as well as validate, excuse me, an idea that will generate leads is they need to understand their, their customer transformation map. And this is not your customer journey. That's why I call it a customer transformation map. Because there, there are several different customer journeys that are talked about in marketing. There's, you know, like they go from awareness to whatever, all that stuff. This is not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is the transformation you lead your clients to. And depending on what your business is about, it could be a very small thing or it could be a big thing. I mean, it's what you do. And so what a customer transformation does customer transformation map does is it outlines that transformation that you offer in your business and identifies the key milestones in that journey so that you can better create products, services, and books that will serve your clients better as well as attract your ideal clients to you. So the first thing you need is an earliest before state. You need to identify what that is. If someone came to you at the very beginning of the transformation you offer, what is this before state that they are in that they would come to you in? So for example, in my customer transformation journey, that would be someone who they've turned on the author switch. They're like, okay, I want to write a book what next? <laughs> they may or may not have an idea. They just know they want to write a book. So that's the very earliest before state. The next thing you need to think about is what is that after state? And your after state can be one of two things. It can either be the state in which they are, where they go on their merry way and they don't need you anymore. Or it could be a, a state in which they may enter into a, a maintenance mode with you. And so you'll need to identify what that after state is. And if it involves maintenance mode, what does maintenance mode mean? So for again, within my own business, that after state is they have a book, it has been launched, they are starting to market it. Maintenance mode for me is one of two things. There's two different kinds of maintenance mode. There's the mindset. There go the balloons again. They're back. There's the mindset. Okay, I'm gonna have to figure out why. If you know why that keeps happening, please put it in the comments because I have no clue. Anyway, so in my business, the maintenance mode is either mindset, they need to continually keep their author switch on and so, They've got everything else handled. They just they would just want to continually maintain their because you know, writing and being an author can be hard. It can be challenging. It can make you feel this big and this tall. I mean, so maintenance mode is is mindset, but a more important maintenance mode is book marketing. Because the, the thing is, there's a, a buffet of things you can do in book marketing. And new things are coming up all the time, new ways that you can, new ways you can do the old things. Sometimes old things no longer work. Yeah, I, so book marketing is a maintenance thing. That's why I have two memberships that I'm developing, one to help with maintenance of the mindset, another to help with the maintenance of the book marketing. So you've got your beginning and you've got your end. So you've got your bookmarks, not your bookmarks, your bookends. 
beginning and the end. Now, the third thing you need to consider are what are the milestones in between? These are, I guess, good stopping points or they're natural stopping points, points where someone might go, okay, some people will think, okay, this is the end of my journey, even though it, it doesn't necessarily need to be, or it may be a point where a product could take them to. So for example, the milestones along my customer's transformation journey include, like they come, the beginning is the idea of the next step might be the outline, the next step might be writing, editing, publishing, launching, marketing. Those are different milestones along my particular customer transformation journey. What are yours? And the reason why you want to know these different milestones is each of those milestones not only are stops along the way if someone starts with you at the beginning, but they are also points of entry if someone's further along their journey, they may enter into working with you at one of these milestones. So someone might come to me because they've already got an idea. They've maybe even written the outline for their book, but they're not sure how to turn that outline to a book. So they come to me to help them write it. Or they may come to me because they've already written a book and it's just not going where they need it to go. They want to relaunch it or they want to market it better. These are different entry points into working with me. The fourth thing, and I've already kind of talked about that, is really identify what your maintenance mode is. What is your maintenance mode? What does it mean? What kinds of things do you do? Um, this can turn, and how do you want to offer this maintenance mode? Is it a membership site? Is it an ongoing mastermind? There are lots of different ways, <laughs> excuse me, there are lots of different ways that you can offer ongoing support for maintenance mode. And the fifth thing you want to consider, is there something that you do in your business to help support your clients that can happen at any point along the journey? So for me, when I mapped out my journey, I put mindset through the whole thing because the mind goblins pop up all across the journey. They pop up to stop you from your idea, stop you from your outline, stop you, stop, 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 stop. So mindset is more than maintenance. It's a full journey thing. So once you have those five things, you can map out this journey. I recommend literally mapping it out. I've, I've got maps of it that I've created in PowerPoint. I've got maps I've created in Canva that are like really like have people on them and stuff. <laughs> Whatever works for you. It could be a stick figure. Or it could be a line. It, what works for you? you? You want to document this customer journey map, this customer transformation map, because it will help you throughout your business. It will help you come up with topics for a podcast. It will come up with help you come up with ideas of what to talk about in your blog, in your books, what products you, it, it basically colors everything you do because everything you do in your business needs to speak to something in that customer transformation journey. So there you have it, the five things to include in your customer transformation map. Do you think I left anything out? Please let me know in your comment. Do you find this concept helpful? I'd love to hear that. And I will see you tomorrow when I will be talking about five techniques for effective self-editing. This is Karma Spence with Coffee with Karma saying ciao for now.